How's it going guys? It's Louis here from ConqueredHealth.co, personal trainer, nutritionist and life coach. So vestibular migraine, vestibular neuritis series. Today we're talking supplements. So it's only a short video guys on supplements because I think sometimes people go way to OTT, they just ramble on for ages and you know, supplements is a really confusing area for people. People get lost, they're not sure what to do, what to take. And it just becomes like this minefield of you end up taking either tons of supplements or not enough supplements. Now, with vestibular migraine, vestibular neuritis, a super debilitating condition. And if you're watching this video, you either have it, have had it or know someone that has it at the moment, more than likely. And I've done a video on diets and what kind of diet has helped me and helps my clients with this condition. I've also done a video on a load of tips to help out with this condition. But today I'm just going to talk specifically on some supplements that I have found that have helped me or have helped people I know, not just supplements that have, you know, been written about on the internet or that may help. Only things that I have experience about or I have experience with helping people within clinical practice. Now, supplement number one is magnesium. Now, magnesium has over 400 different functions in the body. If you're magnesium deficient, you're going to experience things such as anxiety, depression, migraines, migraines, muscle cramps, um, issues transporting other nutrients to different areas of your body, dehydration. There's just going to be all sorts of things that go wrong. And in, in fact, it's way too many to name. Now, for me, I actually had a big improvement in my symptoms just by up in my magnesium. I run blood tests on myself every three months and my serum magnesium was extremely low. Well, not extremely, but it was low. And I, I was actually taking magnesium. I had been taking magnesium citrate at the time. And for one reason or another, I hadn't been absorbing it so well. So um, I converted to magnesium taurate, which is a very well-researched, normally well-absorbed form of magnesium and got much better results on that and found actually um, for someone who has suffered with anxiety or sometimes does suffer with anxiety it's really helped improve that side of things as well um, with clients we or I tend to experiment between magnesium theonate which is known to cross the blood brain barrier so it can be very helpful for um, anti-migraine anti-anxiety um, perspective uh, magnesium taurate, which I just mentioned, or magnesium glycinate. So I, I would start with some taurate, guys. If you're already on taurate and it's not working for you, maybe swap to glycinate or, or theonate and just see how those work for you and see if you get any traction on there. Um, now, the good thing about magnesium, really, there's no massive ill benefits to doing it apart from, say, getting some diarrhea at too high a dose. So I would start with 400 milligrams. It's well researched to have good effects on migraines at 600 milligrams. Personally, I take 800 to 1,000 because I'm an athlete and I do train hard and I do lose a lot of magnesium. So, um, you know, if you're not on any at the moment, start with 400. If you are um, and it's not working, either change your, your type of magnesium or up the dosage slightly. And you're just going to have to play about with it. Um, you know, give it a week at a time just to see if you feel like it's working and don't be impatient. Um, you know, these things can be very effective, but you need to be patient and find what dosing works for you. There isn't a one size fits all. And, and you know, that's a huge problem we find in the industry now is that um, people feel there's a one size fits all and that's just not the case. Um, optimizing vitamin D levels. So if you can get a vitamin D3 with a K2 spray um, and take between three to 5,000 I use a day is, you know, normally as a nutritionist, my recommendation. Um, it's a hormone. Vitamin D is a hormone. If you're low on vitamin D, you're going to have all sorts of um, ill effects. It could affect your thyroid function, your adrenals. Um, it can be pro-inflammatory. You know, optimal vitamin D levels are much more anti-inflammatory and um, it helps the absorption of nutrients. So make sure you're not low on vitamin D. If you're living in somewhere cold, um, or cloudy and you're unable to access the sun or get outdoors, 
then that's what I recommend taking a spray. If you can get outdoors in the sun, then, then great. And you know, as much as your body, expose as much of your body as possible. If you can go naked in your garden, then great. Or, you know, down in a bikini or boxer shorts. And for a period of time, depending on your um, skin tone, if you're slightly darker skin like me, you can get out in the sun a bit longer. But don't cake yourself in sun cream straight away if you're somebody like me or someone darker because you're not going to absorb um, the vitamin D that you want. So if you're paler skin, then obviously, you know, some limited time in the sun without sun cream and then make sure that you, you know, you're not overdoing that because you will burn basically. CoQ10. CoQ10 is something I'm a huge fan of. I take it for um, energy protection um, and it helps optimize like our ATP levels. And it's uh, really important, which is really important for fueling our mitochondria um, within the cells. So make sure that you're taking some CoQ10, experiment with that. You might just feel better with your cognitive um, function anyway when taking some um, CoQ10 and feel a bit more lucid. I recommend about um, 150 milligrams a day. You can go a little bit more, up to maybe 200, 250, depending on who you are. But again, start at a decent dosage. And, and don't go too crazy on it. Make sure that you're optimized on B vitamins. Um, vitamin B2 is particularly good and can play a big role in migraine sufferers. So, you know, that's, that's a funny one because you can, if you take a methylated B complex, which is the best way to take B vitamins, you can get a bit excitable. It can cause like that, that kind of anxiety buzzy type feeling so you have to experiment with that if you know you might be you might be optimal already on b vitamins and that's why i always recommend getting blood tests i mean i do fdx um reports on clients and they're the most amazing blood tests in the world in my opinion so it's always good to get your bloods done to see what your vitamin levels are but definitely having optimal b vitamins are good turmeric or curcumin which is um, an extract from turmeric it's uh, massively anti-inflammatory and um, anytime that you can keep your inflammation under control, it's going to support your journey back to recovery. Um, inflammation is chronic, systemic inflammation is a huge problem for many diseases, one of them being vestibular neuritis and vestibular migraines. Probiotics. So probiotics, really important. Let's you've got to make sure that your gut health is, your gut microbiome is optimized. So um, I recommend a probiotic with a mixture of lactobacillus and bifidobacteria and also a soil-based organism like Saccharomyces boulardii, always a bit of a mouthful for someone who's a bit dyslexic like me. Um, so I recommend a soil-based organism because it really does help colonize the gut and fight off any fungal infections um, that could be causing you a reaction to cause your vestibular migraine. Or, the, or your vestibular neuritis. So a combination between those two. Um, BioCult on my website, they do a good probiotic. Um, HealthAid do another good probiotic. So I'll, I'll put some links in the video below, guys, so that you can uh, bang onto those links and you can buy these if you're not sure which probiotics to get. And my last recommendation, there are, or oh, actually I've got two more. So I've got two more. Ginkgo biloba, I forgot about that one. So ginkgo biloba is very well researched for increasing blood flow into the brain and in and around the ears. So start with one capsule of ginkgo biloba a day and just maintain that to see if you get any response there. Now, me personally, I have experimented with it and did I notice a huge difference? I've done it a few times, I'm not so sure, but I've had clients who have told me that they've got marked improvements on it. So I leave it in there um, for something for you guys to try. We're all individuals again, may work for you, may have worked for me but at the time i was doing a few things at once it was difficult to tell but ginkgo biloba is definitely something to look out for now my last supplement and an extremely important one is digestive enzymes now if your digestion is not optimized you're going to have huge problems in all parts of your health you're going to have food fermenting in your gut acid reflux potentially um, which is GERD, silent reflux um, SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth as your food ferments in your body and causes a systemic inflammatory response. If you then develop leaky gut, which many people have, you're going to find toxins leaking through the gut wall into the bloodstream and it's going to create systemic inflammation and go to cause you lots of problems. So you want to make sure you're eating the right diet. Um, 
like the diet I spoke about in my diet video for vestibular neuritis and vestibular migraines, but you want, you want to make sure that you're extracting those nutrients. There's no point in eating a really good diet and, and, not, and not absorbing it, not digesting it. Now there's some really good um, supplements and really good digestive enzymes from now, super enzymes they're called, and they are my favorite brand. Again, I'll, I'll bang them in the link below so you guys at least got somewhere to go um, to order those. Um, other than that, guys, I think that's everything supplements-wise. I don't want to overcrowd people with too much information. Let me know how you get on. Leave comments in the boxes below. I, tr I do really try to answer all your comments. Um, I would appreciate, you know, any feedback um, as constructive as possible. It helps me to make more videos. And if you guys have had experience with any other supplements that I've left out, please let me know because, you know, as a coach, as a nutritionist, I'm always evolving we don't know everything and the more information I can take off the people, um, off you guys with real life experience, the more I can give back.